an underground platform, overhead electric wires, but where are the train tracks? Hi everyone and welcome to Boston, Massachusetts. I've been here a few times before, but this is actually my very first time making Trains Are Awesome videos here, so that's exciting. Um, I wanna get into downtown Boston as quick as possible, so let's take the T. The T is what people here in Boston call their public transportation system. It's run by the MBTA. We're gonna go find a stop to head into the city. As with most airports, just follow signs pointing towards ground transportation. We just saw a bird fly through here. Hopefully it doesn't hit us. Oh, hi, Lindsay. Now you have the option of choosing the silver line or the blue line. Though I was excited to ride the blue line, it was unfortunately closed for construction during our stay. The silver line leaves directly from each terminal anyways, as this map indicates. This is the MBTA transit map. As you can see, subway lines in Boston are named after colors, just like in Chicago or Washington, D.C. If we zoom into the Silver Line, however, you'll notice that it has a very unusual shape. Let's take a look at the official MBTA Silver Line map. Notice how the Silver Line is actually made up of multiple different services. Over on the left, we have routes SL4 and SL5, which run up and down the Washington Street corridor. Moving to the right, we see SL1, SL2, and SL3. These are known as the waterfront lines, and today we are taking SL1 from the airport to Boston South Station. While this route may already look strange and confusing like this, it becomes absolutely bonkers when you look at a map of how the Silver Line runs geographically. What train could possibly run in such a twisty way, and why? But everything becomes crystal clear when you realize that despite being treated as a subway on the map, the Silver Line is, in fact, a bus. The Silver Line is what Boston calls its bus rapid transit routes. Rides on SL1 are free, which makes this a particularly attractive way to get to the city. Notice the large baggage racks, a nice touch for airport transportation. After looping to stop at every terminal, the bus makes its way onto Interstate 90 also known as the Massachusetts Turnpike. Thankfully, traffic conditions were not that bad today. At full speed, we dive under Boston Harbor. The Ted Williams Tunnel takes the I-90 underneath the harbor, and once we've reached the other side, we turn off the expressway. This is World Trade Center Station. We will actually stop here twice, once up here on the street and once below the surface. The next station is Silver Line Way. This is where something really fascinating happens. After Silver Line Way, routes SL1, 2, and 3 enter a tunnel known as the Silver Line Way that is exclusively for Silver Line buses. This underground bus tunnel is electrified, so at Silver Line Way, our bus raises its trolley poles to connect with the trolley wires. That's right, though we got here on diesel power, we have now switched to being a trolley bus. Where else in the world can you ride a hybrid trolley bus? I've never been on one before, but if you know of a different place, please let me know in the comments. Once the poles are up, we electrically glide down into the tunnel. 
Our first stop will be World Trade Center, again, this time though at the underground platforms. Now it may surprise you to know that this tunnel is not a guided busway. Rather than the track guiding the bus, the bus driver must steer the bus through these narrow tunnels as if it was a regular road. And then around 15 minutes after leaving the airport, we approach Boston South Station. feels like a subway station. South Station offers a convenient connection to the platforms of the Red Line. Of course, since we took SL1, we didn't pay any fare. We couldn't find a ticket machine between our platform and the Red Line, so we may have given ourselves a free ride on Red. Don't worry, we properly paid for every other trick we took that week. downtown and tunnel parts were kind of slow but like from the airport to the waterfront area it took less than 10 minutes it was fast it was free which is great and then the bus tunnel is cool but i also think the trolley bus feature adds something really special to this experience they are scheduled to be replaced by battery buses in the future so if you can get to boston while there's still trolley buses i highly recommend it so we made it to Boston's downtown crossing. How was your Silver Line experience? It was great. I liked it a lot. It was also nice because they kept turning on the heat on my feet and that felt really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a cold day today, especially for me. Now, compared to other BRT lines I've been on, I have to say I enjoyed riding the Silver Line the most. I was almost going to title this video, Boston's Amazing BRT, but it turns out a lot of people aren't happy with the Silver Line. In fact, the Institute for Transportation and Development Policy refuses to even consider the Silver Line a BRT. A lot of the frustration is aimed at routes SL4 and 5, which we didn't ride today. These do not have their own transit way, instead operating solely on the city streets. Though they have some dedicated bus lanes, these are barely enforced. Washington Street was served by an elevated orange line until 1987 when it was rerouted. It took another 15 years for the Silver Line to begin running on this corridor and the Silver Line doesn't even go as far as the original orange line did. Travel time has increased from 8 minutes back then to 20 minutes today. I can understand why commuters aren't too thrilled about the replacement. The other routes using the transitway reroute today are not free from criticism either. You see, the point of bus rapid transit is to create a fast bus route. This means stops spread far apart, signal priority at crossings, but it also means that an agency needs to take steps to reduce dwell times at stations. 
level boarding, paying fare before you board so you can use all doors, those are all ways to reduce the amount of time a bus stops at a station. In fact, the reason Route SL1 is free is to allow people to board faster at the airport, using all doors instead of only at the front. However, outside of the underground transit way, these features I mentioned earlier don't exist. For example, for all routes except SL1, you must pay on board, the stops are spaced close together, and buses are frequently caught in traffic. Route SL3 has to wait for the Chelsea Bridge several times a day, and even switching modes from gas to electric is a process that costs time. All in all, critics of the Silver Line correctly point out that the Silver Line lacks a lot of features that makes rail transit so great. But what do I think? Taking these critiques into consideration, I can't help but compare to the other cities I've been to. I think that the wayfinding as well as the real-time information are much better here in Boston than the other BRT routes I've taken. Especially the underground stations certainly feel like they are a part of the Boston subway. And I thought 15 minutes from the airport to downtown was reasonable. As someone who does not live in Boston and uses this route as a tourist, I have to admit I was impressed, but I can imagine that for daily commuters, they might wish they had something better. Have you ever been on the Boston Silver Line? What are your thoughts on BRT? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. We've got several days of exploring Boston ahead of us, and when we travel by train, you'll be there with us. See you next time.